I will tell you that one of the biggest things uh, that I was trying to do while I was at FedEx, and it really helped, but it's like it, you apply this principle no matter where you're at. And that's where you've got to align your expectations. Make sure mm-hmm. your expectations as a client, as a customer are put out there and then work with your service providers, your customs brokers, your transportation companies and, and your handlers and, and you know, the warehouses. You need to really look at all of that and align with them to make sure that one, your service provider knows what your expectations are. Two, you need to also be flexible enough that that service provider may not be able to fulfill your expectations. You may be a bit right. unreasonable. Regardless, right. it's like everybody should do it. No, wait a minute. Just back up a minute. Because changing a service provider that is integrated into your process is a big deal. And I would rather work with your service provider and try and work out what's amiable. Here's where I was going to say is, again, align those expectations so you both know what you can expect from your service provider in whatever services they're providing. But the other thing is, if a service provider comes back, and I had to do this a lot, I'm sorry, we can't do what you're looking for in this step. However, now this is what was different. I would come back, here's our alternative. So if you're a service provider, you don't just say, nope, we can't do that and leave it alone. You need to come back Mm -hmm. and say, well, you're trying, what is it you're trying to accomplish? Here's our alternatives. Here's some of the other things we can do. And it usually turned out that the way we accomplish things and and the uh, thing, it, it was even the the service was superior to what they their expectations were because we right. worked together on it. Right, because everybody can be on the same system. You know, there's a very well known brand out there that is used by the industry, and I call it the beast. And it does any and everything, but it all depends on you may have secured another service provider that uses mm-hmm. that same system, but what module did they buy? How did they use the system? And it varies. I mean, you know, you're spot on in the in the level of expectation. I always say mm-hmm. that when you're onboarding, you should be meeting with that client. Depending on your volume, you should be meeting with have a, a sit down and set up calls mm-hmm. in the, you know, do pre onboarding of the client, make sure that's okay, expectations are met. And then when the service starts, keep it as a living document. An SOP is not a one yes, and done. It, it's not it a, a one and done. Oh, that document. is so important. And as you go through, one of the other challenges that I always like to, to, put forward is as especially you know in the express world but i mean it applies to any mode of transportation ocean rail truck air cargo air express imports exports warehousing expectations must be addressed and understand the service you want and the service that that service provider can give to you And to that point, here's where I was going to say, I agree right there is all the way through is if you are the client, what will it take for all the information that's required to be on the paperwork at the origin? So when that origin courier or or trucking company, whatever, picks up your shipment, all the information is on that paperwork up front, the classification, the special declarations, the government declarations, the OGAs and all that. All right. So here's the thing. All of a sudden, people look at it and go, well, wait a minute. Now, let me show you, say, where usually this is where, to me, if you can't trust the paperwork, and I always ask this question, let me just ask it real quick, and then I'll go on to the comment, is if, do you trust the commercial invoice and the paperwork that comes with the shipment from the origin? And if the answer is, oh, no, we don't trust the classification, of the, well, if from a compliance standpoint, then you have not done your job. I'm sorry if if that uh, hurts your feelings. I may be plowing too close to the corn for you, but doggone it, it's like you need to reach out and figure out in yeah. your process with all the people, what will it take? to get all that information on that paperwork up front. So that means a whole lot of collaboration, data flows, and everything else. But if you go with that objective, Melzi, does that not empower 
the service provider, so they don't have to look up at a database or somewhere else. It's already there on the paperwork. Correct. Correct. And all too often, we see those uh, classifications incorrect of where mm-hmm. you say where the SOP states specifically mm-hmm. do not go by the classification provided on commercial documentation. Please mm-hmm. use our SOP. Please use go by the SKU or, or description of the commodity from that uh, particular manufacturer or, or um, reseller. Mm-hmm. And and go to your database. Lots of people work it, whatever I call the PPD, uh, package, paperwork, and data. And with that is that when you're doing your SOPs and you're, you're writing down your procedures of what's going on, because writing down your procedures is the same thing as your, your SOPs. I mean, you just, you may make some modifications, but step one, step two, step three, whatever. Mm-hmm. But you, I think you have to look at it and I'd love your opinion on this. Maybe you're doing the same kind of thing. You just call it something different, but I always had. The physical movement of the shipment, uh, that's the package part of it. It's like, okay, something's ready to go. It could be a pallet. It could be a whole plain uh, load of stuff. It could be just a small little parcel. But the package itself is physical. It has to move through the physical realm, and you have to map that out, if you will, or or the steps and what's Mm -hmm. needed. Second Mm -hmm. is the paperwork in filling out the bill of lading to the commercial invoice, to the purchase orders, to the whatever happens in the entry and and who and your vendors and getting information to different places. And then the third thing would be the data. There's times in today's world, especially you have uh, data flows, uh, data files that are exchanged and and different things of that. That needs to, to look at how is that working and when does it go and what's the flow of that. But also the timelines on every one of those is so paramount. Mm-hmm. The package may be, all right, you got a pick and pack order. It's going through and it may be sitting on the dock, but the data for that shipment can go ahead and start uploading to different systems and to different vendors. And and then the paperwork's generated from that. And then it's married up. There's multiple updates and all that. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I agree with that, with that approach when you're looking at and understanding the business, you know, mm-hmm. um, is one key thing that, um, the importer, exporter or domestic warehouse that are mm-hmm. or whomever is has the goods. You need to explain to the service provider that exam exact thing. How is the package mm-hmm. flowing? How is the paperwork flowing? And is there any data electronics? How is that moving through your supply chain? And then mm-hmm. in turn, that service provider needs to ex- explain and and over how their process flows. You mm-hmm. know, are you having the right people at the desk and or at the table, so to speak, in communicating this? Because we all love our marketing sales guys, but a lot of times there are decisions made mm-hmm. that are, are commitments made based upon securing that business that doesn't flow exactly to um the operations and even mm-hmm. to an import export manager over that particular uh, product for that company in that location. Mm-hmm.